national ID when you do it. Everything we said the national ID would be for, they have said in spades, in triplicate. I mean, this is the most brazen, biggest, healthiest, most gargantuan, oppressive, classical, flaming tyranny on steroids the world's ever seen. And it's just growing. And its tentacles are going into place everywhere. And it's just licking its big old lips with big old sharp teeth. And you, if you think the globalists have persecuted people so far, that was only a baby suckling. Now it's on both legs and it's We're ready to kill. And that's the allegory I'm using right here. As I went out to break, I'm going pure evil. They hate you and your family. They want to hurt you. They're coming after you. I use this example a lot because it's one of the totally cut and dry cases where they were caught red-handed in France and in Australia. Bayer Pharmaceutical, who gives money to the forced inoculation lobby, that gives money to the gun control lobby, that gives money to the open borders lobby. You look at the Fortune 100, all of them. But the Koch brothers give to open borders, gun control, world government, socialism, and this whole system of dependence. The Koch brothers give to both sides. They used to be just giving to the Democrats, but Clinton screwed them over, so they started uh, paying both sides. But that's both sides of the same coin. So they're made the ultimate conspiracy pariah because, oh my gosh, there wouldn't be a right-wing media if it wasn't for the Koch brothers. Everyone that talks bad about the New World Order, why, you know, they must work for the Koch brothers. Every pseudo-intellectual out there doesn't have to actually do anything. They can just say Alex Jones works for the Koch brothers and then be super intellectuals and lay back and talk about how smart they are. Now, I wish the Koch brothers would give me $20 million a year. I could fund this operation. I don't have to sell anything. I don't have to advertise squat. In fact, I'm ready right now. If the Cook brothers have never given me one dime, they want to give me $20 million a year. I will continue to cover the exact same issues I am now. And I will not do anything they tell me to say or do. But I will take their money right now gladly. So please hand it over. But, oh, when Rachel Maddow gets stimulus money from General Electric that's tax exempt, and exempt from Obamacare and exempt from the power plant rules, that's okay. And NPR and the rest of it, that's that's all right. And now there's an admitted war, in the words of Media Matters, in the memo that came out in Politico four years ago, to bring down the alternative libertarian conservative press, to bring down Fox News, Matt Drudge, and Alex Jones. I can't stand half of what's on Fox News. I, I, I love the Drudge Report. It's just a bunch of different, diverse news. But Fox News is one of the most vicious attackers of this show. And why is that? Because Rupert Murdoch, in his other media empire, promotes anti-gun, anti-family, carbon tax, garbage, 24-7 pell-mell. And they don't like the fact that there's another news organization out there that is really libertarian, that is really patriot, that is really dedicated to saving the republic, that is really dedicated to free market. It's truly sickening. I remember about six, seven years ago, it happened for about two years, Fox News executives, and I'm going to your calls, their major developers would call me and want me to go do pilots for Fox News. And you notice sometimes my producers or my staff would be on Fox News and not me in these TV shows. Because I said, nope. But I said, if you want to interview one of my staff, you can. I'm not going to work for Fox News. And they'd say, you really don't want to have a show on Fox News. And I'd say, no, I don't want to have a show on Fox News. I mean, for one thing, I already reach an audience worldwide in many respects. You have more shows than I do, so you're much bigger. But for just you know, one show per capita, I reach as much as one of your top shows does. So why would I want to do that when I'm already reaching audiences as big or bigger? Oh, and the other part, I make more money than the average Fox News host, a lot more. And the difference is I don't care about that money. That's money to then build an organization. 
I took the money that I made on over 160 plus radio stations and I took that money that, that other hosts, again, would have jet airplanes and mansions and trophy wives, and I put that money not into luxury golf course memberships and stuff like that. Not that anything's wrong with that. That's what makes the economy go. I'm just saying I put it into news. I put it into trying to build something better. And I'm just digressing off into this. I'm going to go to your calls momentarily because to show how they spend things after I would never go up to Fox News and meet with these people. They then had national news pieces out about Alex Jones wants a show on Fox News. And they had articles in Rolling Stone and articles in New York Daily News and all these articles about how I was refused a job at Fox News and I'm bitter and I'm unhappy. Think about the narcissistic mental illness of the executives at Fox News creating news articles that I later learned they had spurred to get written in, in, in the New York magazine at least that was another one to make it look like i was a failure and they were winners can you imagine the delusional world where guys sit around in offices and people come in and kiss their butt all day and they've got teleprompter readers that just put out the same dribble to pacify conservatives and stall libertarians so we think we've got a voice and then they're they're out having articles written where they have simulated victories over me and simulated victories where i've been spurned can you imagine being that type of egomaniac that you would waste your time on that? But that's who the globalists hire are these empty yes-men sellouts who would die and go to heaven to have all the opportunities I've had and the things I've turned down. And I'm not bragging. I'm just getting people into the nature of the sellouts. I mean, I get offered to be in big movies routinely and just go, sorry, can't do it. I get offered to have my own TV shows routinely. Sorry, can't do it. And that just shows how the truth is what sells. The truth is what is popular. And the world can't stand the fact that we've been successful because you're part of this, the viewers and listeners, just as much as I am, and that they don't run and control what we say and what we do. And they see us growing and growing and growing. And that's why I know they're so easy to beat the minute the general public realizes what a fraud they are. And I'm not singling out Fox News. I mean, Fox News is nothing compared to the mental institution that is MSNBC or the twisted, sycophantic joke that is CNN. I mean, these people are jokes. These people sold out the greatest country the world had ever seen. These people thought they were powerful because they were able to get control of America and run us in the ground. That's like taking control of a great, ancient, beautiful ship and running it onto the rocks and then dancing around on the deck, you know, peeing on the main, main sail, the main, the main mast and going, I dominated this. You didn't dominate anything, you trash. You ran it on the rocks, you scum. Because its existence and all the honor associated with it made you so upset and so nauseous that you couldn't you, you couldn't be around it like a vampire can't be around the, the light of the midday sun. I don't mean to start ranting. I said I'd go to the calls. It's just, I just start thinking about the type of men and women we're up against that work for the system at, at the top. The type of delusional trash like Nancy Pelosi saying, that the Planned Parenthood videos are all fake and she wants it investigated and they're a fraud and they're a hoax and they're manufactured and then going, but I've never seen any of it. We have yes men running things that don't care if 91% of the nuclear reactors, or is it 93, excuse me, are leaking. I mean, 30 years ago they cared. They don't care anymore. They don't care about their kids. They're mentally ill. This world creates a type of artificial borderline personality disorder that is now spreading like a disease to the general public as well, where they don't even care if they're being destroyed 
They don't even care if things are falling apart around them. They don't even care if they're wrong. They don't care. They will continue to gibber and laugh and say they control reality while they sink the entire planet. Let's go to your phone calls. I apologize to Tim for saying I'd go to him, and I didn't. Tim, you're on the air from Wyoming. Go ahead. Thanks for holding. Yes, hi. Thanks for taking my call. Um, we were talking. You were talking earlier about uh, Vladimir Putin. Um, I think that he's just defending his country from from tyranny. He doesn't. He doesn't appreciate worldwide tyranny. And of course, neither do you, and neither do uh, ninety nine percent of your listeners, most likely. But uh, I'm, I'm pretty much a new listener to you. Um, you <laughs> you actually said something that I've uh, that I said myself a few years ago. I had no idea that other people even thought that way. I said it to uh, a woman who, with the League of Women Voters, she said. Why do you think the parties are the same? And I took a quarter out of my pocket and I flipped it in the air and I said, look, both sides are attached to each other and they have the same core value. So you said the coin, this is attached to the coin. Absolutely. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate that. I mean, I'm glad that uh, people, are, people are waking up to the fact that our country is basically being destroyed from the inside and the outside. I'd say more from the inside than the outside, unfortunately. Uh, when I was uh, when I was a member of the John Birch Society years ago, I I started being woken up. Um, friends of mine told me, "Hey, this Alex Jones guy, you got to listen to him." I didn't even know about you. This was this was about 15 years ago, and and you were, I mean, fairly new, I guess, at the time. But I didn't even know about you. I had no idea, and I've just started listening. Like I say, I you know I appreciate everything you're doing and everything you're saying, and of course, I'm not trying to just you know blind. No, I hear you, brother. Out. I appreciate you too. And it's the power of word of mouth. It's the power of the people that will overthrow the establishment media, the establishment corporations, and all these globalists. Look at how McDonald's is in trouble. Look at how all these globalist corporations like Monsanto are in trouble. We the people do have the power. That's why the system wants to overthrow what's left of the free market and our power to vote with dollars and our purchases and replace it with a totally top-down command and control economy where there is no choice, then they've really got us. God bless you. Good to have you as part of the listenership, Tim. Thank you. Great points. Mitchell in Texas, thanks for holding. You're on the air. Hello, brother. This is Mitchell from uh, the Fort Worth area. Um, I've been listening to politics for about a year now. And um, just four days ago, Alex, I made a Twitter, and I came to this conclusion, what exactly wrong is wrong with our society? If I could break it down into two reasons, I would say it's our loss of social cohesion. We no longer have this idea of loving thy neighbor, we have an asset forfeiture society. Reason number two, we've lost our strong local Christian morals, and our, our, our passion has become strange, and conservatives are now crazy. Brother, are you there? I'm listening, yes. Yeah, there's somebody on call waiting call you. Okay, if I could just uh, tell you a real quick story. I've been going to a community college in my area, and I got kicked out the other day, and I was told I could never come back until I talked to a crisis counselor. I, uh, I've been told by my teachers that I was not allowed to talk about libertarian ideas before and after class. And um, the day Oh, yeah, I got universities out, everywhere. If you even talk at lunch or in a courtyard to one person about freedom, uh, you're being given academic suspension or probation. It's even happening to Ph.D. students uh, at the University of Texas. We're doing kind of an undercover thing we're about to start. I'm just going to let them know they don't care. They're so arrogant where they actually you know, basically chant, we do not have questions, we do not ask questions, we submit, whites are evil. This is white people. We are bringing in world government. I mean, it is, it is total cult-level control. So, so tell me about your um, evil that you committed. You talked to someone after class, that's not allowed, and you, and you got in some trouble for talking in America? Absolutely. The day before it happened, I was in a conversation with a veteran next to me, and I was talking about how abortion was just about... Um, Human, uh, population control and uh, dehumanizing and